right. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> uh, Lieutenant Governor, Secretary Tepper, uh, distinguished guests, welcome to Salem and welcome to the Salem Offshore Wind Terminal. My name is Dominic Pangallo. I have the honor of serving as the mayor of Salem. Uh, I want to recognize and thank the other elected officials, state and local officials who are with us today, uh, members of our legislature, our own state senator, Joan Lovely, our state representative, Manny Cruz, our friends from, from other districts who have joined us as well and from other communities, Mayor Kale from Beverly, the members of the Salem City Council and school committee who are here, our partners from Mass CEC, Crowley Wind Services, from Labor and all of our community partners, and also to the many city staff who have worked tirelessly over the last three years to make this day possible, especially uh, our planning director, Tom Daniel, our harbor master and port authority director, Bill McHugh, our city attorney, Beth Renard, our Chief Financial Officer, Anna Friedman, and our Offshore Wind Planner, Daniel Collins. Thank you all. <laughs> Salem's story has, for centuries, been written on the sea. Etched across the waves of the Atlantic from the days when this spot was called Namkeg, or fishing place, through European arrival and the fishing fleets that sustained them, and the sailors who risked their lives on the deep to secure American independence. From the great age of maritime trade that made our then young nation prosperous, to the barges that brought the coal that powered New England industry, to the ferries that moved and still move countless people to and from our city, Salem's legacy is the legacy of the sea. For over 400 years, the people of this place have looked across the waves and said, we can brave the tides and the perils for our common good. Salem's Nathaniel Hawthorne once observed, that far resounding roar is the ocean's voice of welcome. His salt breath brings a blessing along with it. Here in Salem, we know that blessing, the bounty of the sea, the promise of a prosperous passage with full sails, the hope of a better future. And we know that it coexists with the ever increasing dangers from that same sea. On January 13th of this year, just a mile from here, a king tide and a strong wind combined to demolish a seawall in the Juniper Point neighborhood, which had stood for decades. That same storm surge inundated homes around Collins Cove and in the Point, which had never seen flooding before. It turned Commercial Street and parts of Bridge Street into a bay. The climate crisis is here. But we know that while the sea can sink us, it can also save us. Today, we celebrate the transition of the same site where for decades, mountains of coal were stored and burned into one that will make possible the clean energy future that our community, our commonwealth, our country, and our planet must achieve. A future powered by offshore wind energy, clean American energy, from the waters of the mid-Atlantic to the Gulf of Maine, and the green jobs and ge for generations of residents in this environmental justice community that can truly prosper from it. Really, it's a continuation of Salem's story. And today, we're writing its next chapter, one that hears that far resounding call that Hawthorne once observed of the sea's salt breath that brings blessing, no longer of full sails, but of wind power. We hear that call, and we answer it with resolve. We will, once again, brave the tides for our common good because far too much is at stake not to. Thank you, and it is now my great honor to introduce a visionary leader with a profound commitment to that clean energy future and to stronger communities across our Commonwealth, our Governor, Maura Healy. Thank you. Oh. Uh, good morning, Mayor Pangalo. It's, uh, I was standing in the back because it was, it was so beautiful to look out um, on the water here and to listen to your, your poetry. Let's give it up for the mayor, calling on and hearkening Hawthorne. And... Yeah, it was really well done. Really well done and, and so appropriate for this day. Great to be in Salem. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll say more about that. Um, but I know I, I speak on behalf of our entire administration and just... 
saying how thrilled we are to be here today. What this represents, particularly in this moment for our state, uh, for our country, for doing what we need to do, and doing what we need to do in a way that we show we can do it together. You know, we've got Tom Crowley and Bob Carl and the amazing team at Crowley Wind Services here. Thank you, gentlemen and women. The Bonnie Bain and all the great folks at Salem Alliance for the Environment who are here. They show us what it means to be about transformative grassroots leadership on climate. Uh, we've got our friends from labor, and it just it means a lot to me personally. You know, thank you to Chrissy Lynch and the AFL-CIO, to the Massachusetts Building Trades, to the North Shore Building Trades. I know we're going to hear from Rodrigo Badaro in just a little bit. Um, it's just so important, you know, that we here in Massachusetts show a way for labor um, and, and uh, to be able to, to be working and driving this and benefiting from this as our state will benefit from this great, great work. So it's just been a terrific partnership and I, I commend our uh, brothers and sisters in labor. To Emily Reichert of the Massachusetts CEC, she's our frontline leader. She's always pushing us forward, supporting our ecosystem and keeping our state in the lead when it comes to clean energy. And of course, all of what we do is possible because of the, the policies and the funding provided by our tremendous legislature. We thank our legislative partners. You're so lucky in this district in particular um, with Senator Lovely, Representative Cruz, Representative Paracella. Uh, Mayor Mike Cahill is here as well today, so shout out to, uh, to our, our good friend as well. But just to say big time thanks to our state and municipal leaders um, who are on the ground helping to implement, make this possible. And to members of uh, our federal delegation, I don't think we have a stronger delegation in the country when it comes to pushing on climate, leading on uh, the very things that we're doing today. And we're grateful to them, including um, uh, all the money they've helped us bring back to Massachusetts for important climate and infrastructure related projects. And finally, I wanna thank uh, members of the US Maritime Administration for their work. Today, we break ground on something that represents an important step forward for this industry, the Salem Offshore Wind Terminal. This was the site of a polluting, dirty coal plant. Look at the transformation. The turbines assembled here are going to be out there powering homes and businesses across Massachusetts and beyond. They're also creating great jobs to support Massachusetts families and creating a long-term impact that's positive on our local and statewide economy. So we're so grateful to everyone who worked so hard to make this possible. I wanna say something too and acknowledge our um, uh, great Secretary of Energy and Environmental Affairs. Thank you so much, Rebecca Tepper, to you and your team for all the work that you do. So we've heard a little bit about setbacks lately in this space, and we've certainly heard people try to knock this industry. But make no mistake about it, we are not going backward. We are going forward, and Massachusetts is going to lead. Hopefully, we're going to secure our economic development bill that continues to power Massachusetts and positions us to be the global leader when it comes to climate technology. That's our goal. That's where we've got to go, because we have the assets and the resources here. I know that, and you know that. Um, we also are, are, are tenacious, we're creative, we never give up, okay? We're gonna figure out and get to the bottom of what happened, you know, with the, with the GE, okay? We know we, we're gonna deal with that, but, you know, let's, like, be clear about this. We are invested big time in this industry, and we are gonna lead proudly from Massachusetts in this industry, and our state, our communities will be healthier, will be stronger, and frankly, our country's gonna be stronger and more energy independent. Offshore wind is critical to our state. It's critical to reducing emissions and meeting our climate goals, which are established by law, and it's critical for protecting our communities. We've got a competitive edge here in Massachusetts because of such, so many people in this room. Um, the innovators, the advocates, we have the infrastructure. You know, we've got New Bedford and the Marine Commerce Terminal. We've got all the testing that's going on in Charlestown for, for all the blades, and now we've got this awesome Salem port facility. It keeps us moving and moving forward at what is a pivotal time in this clean energy transition. So um, I'll also say we're on a winning streak here. Earlier this week, we were able to announce winning a nearly $400 million grant 
in a multi-state New England coalition that's gonna help us upgrade our regional electric grid. That's a big deal, $389 million. It's also gonna enable almost 4,800 additional megawatts in, in offshore wind. So, you know, we, uh, we always like to play offense and that's a great thing. That's on top of 450 million we got last month to, from the EPA to boost heat pump production in homes across Massachusetts and New England. And many of those homes are going to be powered by offshore wind. In May, the NRDC ranked Massachusetts number two in the nation for our readiness to put federal climate dollars to work. I think since then we've shown we're even more ready, so hopefully we move from two to one. Um, but that's thanks to our strong proactive policies in clean energy, in building decarbonization, and in transportation. And earlier this year, UMass Amherst was chosen by the US Department of Energy to establish with Mass CEC a national center of excellence, an academic hub for developing offshore wind technology. So that's pretty awesome that Massachusetts was chosen to be the place. So today it's about bringing it all together, showing why Massachusetts um, is a winner and will continue to be in this space. And I've uh, got to say, just as a personal point of privilege, this might be the first, other than pride, this might be our first Salem stop together, right? Yeah, so um, I have long been looking forward to this day to return to Kim Driscoll's hometown. Um, she was an incredible, incredible mayor for the city of Salem, and so much of what we celebrate today is, um, is, is her doing, and she's directly responsible for pursuing this with tenacity, which she brings to everything, with a commitment, with a vision for what's possible. So for me, it's pretty cool to be able to stand alongside her, our uh, fantastic Lieutenant Governor, um, returning to Salem, <laughs> who can, uh, who can come, uh, come up today and, and tell, it how, uh, tell us how it all got done. But let's give a warm, warm welcome, as I know you will, to your very own Kim Driscoll. How lucky am I to get to work every single day with Governor Maura Healy? We have a vicious ping pong game going on in our office some days. She's like a backboard, can't win. Like, this is a tremendous day for so many reasons, um, many of which the governor mentioned and Dominic mentioned, Mayor, Mayor Pangalo mentioned. It's not only a great day for Salem, but I think it's a really great day for our Commonwealth, and I just couldn't be more proud to have it happening right here in a community that for so many years has seen this facility change in ebb over the years and is now going to be at the epicenter of this new industry that we are growing here in Massachusetts. It is nascent, it is hard, it is complex, it takes all of our best efforts, public sector, private sector, local government, state government, federal government, coming together to make it happen. And I can't think of a better place for it to take place given our history. Mayor Pingalo mentioned a lot of it, the maritime history. We had teenage captains sailing around the world like 16-year-olds captaining ships going to the Far East and Sumatra and bringing back amazing wares and prominence. I've said often I can't get my 20-year-old to pick up a wet towel off the floor, <laughs> but we had folks putting it all on the line. You, many of you drove across Derby Street to get here. Elias Haskett Derby, first millionaire in America during the Great Age of Sail, made his fortunes and brought back a lot of it to our community. That's the history of this site, the power... Um, that was created here by coal for many years. In 1950, a coal plant arrived here. We were probably happy to get it. It meant jobs, it meant tax revenues, but we know now it also brought a lot of other things with it that weren't so terrific for a neighborhood. And as we think about moving in a new direction, what better place could you imagine than the same location that had to put up with the other stuff, now enjoying the benefit and the opportunity that offshore wind and clean energy will produce, not just for Salem, but for our entire region and, and our state. Um, I'm not, most of you know this, I didn't have the good fortune to be born in Salem. I'm not a native, I'm a Navy brat, born in Hawaii, moved all over. But when I came here to go to college, I never left because there's something special about this place. I like to think it's part of the history. We weren't so good to women in 1692, but other than that, um, 
we punch out of our weight class. We aspire to be better. We continue to find ways to move industry, to move mountains if we have to, to capture opportunities for growth. That's what happens here, a block from the House of Seven Gables. Um, that's what makes this place special. But it doesn't just go on autopilot, much like Massachusetts. It takes really digging in. It takes having a governor who has a vision and is willing to get out of comfort zones to say we're going to achieve it, to put resources together, to use our agile clean energy center in a way that creates something new. This is different. This port is different than other ports. And that's OK, because we knew we were going to have to be different in order to accelerate this industry, to have private sector partners. We've got the best team we could possibly assemble. Crowley is the best ARPA operator we could have at this site that is going to be here long term. <laughs> and it's a nod to that we can do hard stuff. We can transform historic ports. This same port welcomes cruise ships that support our tourism industry. Hooray. In New Bedford, we're the largest scallops landing in the world. We can do that and provide offshore wind and clean energy for our future, the job growth, the economic development, using public space in a way that's going to continue to grow regionally and produce amazing results for our, for our commonwealth and our country. We're going to be celebrating the 250th anniversary of America in 2026, the revolution. A lot of that work started here. Philadelphia and Virginia are trying to claim history, the mantle of history. We're pushing back. So there's lots of stories to tell as we think about 2026, and we're going to have lots of events and parties. That will also be Salem's 400th anniversary uh, of, of being settled. What I'm most excited about is what the next 250 years are going to mean and the work that we're doing today to ensure generations to come are going to benefit from clean energy. You know, one day soon, you're going to turn on your lights, and you'll be drawing from clean sourced electricity generated by turbines assembled in Salem sitting off the coast of a state. That's all produced thanks to Massachusetts policy, Massachusetts workers, and Massachusetts leadership. So as you, as you sit here today, <laughs> as we all sit here today, I come to you with gratitude. Um, I think the governor and I feel most very grateful to be in these positions to be able to shape policy and shift resources. But we also have a responsibility. And as we sit here today collectively, we're owning up to that responsibility to make sure we're building a better future, not only for this community, but for all 351. And that takes all of us. So thank you for being a part of it. Thanks for the work you're doing to make sure this is just day one. We actually have to build it now and, and get through all of the rest of it and have it operational. But it's really exciting, and it wouldn't have happened without every single person in this room and so many others. So thank you. As I mentioned, we do have the A-team working on this, and it does take a public-private partnership, and I'm so grateful that we're joined today by Tom Crowley, Chairman and CEO of the Crowley Corporation, our partner in the new Salem Offshore Wind Terminal. Welcome, please. Uh, well, thank you very much. Um, it's, uh, it's hard to follow uh, those three incredibly skilled presenters today, uh, but I really want to thank the mayor for his kind words. Uh, Governor Healy, really w wonderful. Her, her timing's amazing how she just slid in there and got up here and, and uh, was so eloquent. So thank you very much. And Lieutenant Governor, uh, great to see you again. Uh, you've made great strides since we first met and really, really uh, appreciate all that you have said about us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge our, our partners from the Maritime Administration that are here today. Um, we, are, we are partners with the Maritime Administration on many fronts, um, but here, uh, here today uh, they have a critical role in, in making this, this terminal happen, and we really appreciate their attendance today and their involvement in this project from the very beginning. Jo both Josh Rawl uh, and Thomas Morkin are here today, so thank you. As we've heard, this is a historic mo moment uh, for the city of Salem and the maritime and wind industries that are advancing renewable energy. We appreciate the trust and the partnership with the city and the state's leaders and the residents and businesses to be a part of the inner innovative reuse of this site. Throughout our company history of more than 130 years, we've always worked to find new and innovative ways to deliver value and helping our customers the people and the communities that we serve thrive. Today we are here at the beginning 
of turning a former coal power plant site into a hub for sustainable energy. This is another chapter in that history, and it's an opportunity that we do not take lightly. The industry we are here to support is at the earliest stages of creation here in the United States. We are proud to be a part of that and honored to have all of you here to celebrate this milestone event. Renewable power is here to stay. And with it will come the opportunity for new jobs, building new skills, and capability. The Salem Wind Terminal will be at the heart and serve as the platform for this building effort. As a major union employer, Crowley will continue to support the commitments the industry has made to work together with the PLA. This means a new wave of careers, vessels, and technology for our people and our communities. Together with our project team and our federal, state, and local partners, we are committed to creating a world-class facility that safely and reliably serves offshore, the offshore wind industry from staging to berthing to deployment of assets uh, throughout the wind farms to be constructed offshore. I want to thank you. I'm going to turn the, turn the uh, presentation over to Bonnie Bain, uh, my seatmate over here, uh, to continue the presentation. But I want to just take this opportunity to say thank you all for being here today. Hello. I have the great honor of being the Offshore Wind Program Manager for Salem Alliance for the Environment, or SAFE. SAFE was founded 23 years ago to shut down our coal plant. As watchdogs for this port, we talked about our dream of offshore wind at our founding, and here it is being developed today. With an ethos for community power at our roots and founders with strong social justice focus, we will always center environmental justice through community power building and system change. SAFE knows that when change finally does come, it can happen so fast it doesn't include everyone. So we engaged across the North Shore to make sure community organizations knew about offshore wind, that our workforce development efforts locally focused on ensuring equitable pathways to union pre-apprenticeship green jobs, and that language access was at the forefront. Since these efforts have begun, we have had three years of students from Salem and the surrounding area attending a free Kidwin summer camp. Mass Hire has their first graduating tech school class for sustainable pathways, all with students from local EJ communities. The Salem Port project needed a community benefit agreement modeled on the one SAFE pushed for and influenced when the gas plant came to town. SAFE built a coalition with surrounding neighborhood groups as well as civics organizations, the League of Women Voters, and the Latino Leadership Coalition. We called ourselves Salem Offshore Wind Alliance, or SOA, we came together under environmental justice principles and convinced the Conservation Law Foundation to represent us. It was a year's worth of regular meetings on Zoom, breaking bread, and attending planning board sessions and speaking up, putting together our asks, and working with the mayor and his team on negotiations. The CBA that resulted invests in the roads and green space around the port, creates access to 21st century facility, had a historic investment in childcare, and trust me, I was feeling that need during this process, funding for the Salem High Career and Technical Education Program, scholarships for our students, language access, funding for the Massachusetts Tribe to conduct a fishware project with fourth graders every year, metrics for BIPOC women and local union hires, and importantly, a commitment to port electrification. When SAFE turns 25, we'll see a world-class wind marshing facility at our doorstep with historic environmental justice investments in Salem. And now it is with great excitement that I introduce Rodrigo Berdaro from the International Union of Par Painters and Allied Trades. Good morning, everyone. But I come here as a representative of the North Shore Building Trades Council. And today is a special day for the city of Salem. The labor movement, private development, and the community come together to celebrate the dawn of a new era. The building of this maritime terminal, which will serve as this marching yard to support the construction of the offshore wind industry on the coast of Salem, will create great clean energy jobs all under a project labor agreement.
The formula for accomplishing such a, an important PLA in a fairly small amount of time was the full support of all of the affiliates of the North Shore Building Trades, plus a partnership with a community responsible developer like Rowley, who kept us informed of the whole process and facilitated the connection between us and the general contractor, DW JF White Joint Venture. We cannot forget to mention the support of the president of the Massachusetts Building Trades Union, Frank Callahan, who cannot be here today, and Mayor Dominic Pangalo, has been a great ally and has strongly supported the creation of these good, play, good, good, clean energy jobs for the residents of Salem. Thank you, Mayor Pangalo. The language in the PLA contains substantial diversity, equity, and inclusion conditions, apprenticeship utilization, and local higher goals, directly by benefiting the residents of Salem and all the North Shore, while ensuring that this project is going to be on time, on budget, observing the highest safety protocols. As a commercial slash industrial painter myself, proud member of DC35, the Painters and Light Trades Union, I personally had the privilege to work on jobs on the pre-LA. And I'll tell you one thing, those jobs led to a career that changed my family's life and allowed us to live the American dream in its fullest. And the clean energy jobs that will be created here during the construction of this maritime terminal have the potential to do the same for the members of our communities as a result of this PLA. There will be good pain clean energy union jobs, where the workers will have access to a safe workplace, excellent health care, and retire with dignity. <laughs> and uh, I, I close with a quote from Helen Keller. Alone, we can do so little, but together, we can do so much. Thank you all involved in this simple and essential agreement, and congratulations to the city of Salem. And now, I would like to introduce the CEO of the Mass Clean Energy Center, Dr. Emily Reichert. Well, thank you, Rodrigo, and good morning, everyone. As Rodrigo said, I'm Emily Reichert. I'm the CEO of the Massachusetts Clean Energy Center, and I am so excited to be here celebrating the groundbreaking on the Salem Offshore Wind Terminal alongside our partners at Crowley and the City of Salem. This is a special day for Salem, the North Shore, and all of Massachusetts. And it's a very special day for the team at MassCEC. To see such a strong turnout here and such enthusiasm for building a new industry in Massachusetts means a lot to us. I know we have a lot of speakers this morning, and so I will be very brief, but I am going to take the opportunity to say how grateful I am to some of the members of Team Massachusetts who are here with us today. First, a special thank you to Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, former mayor um, of Salem, uh, Secretary Rebecca Tepper, Commissioner Elizabeth Mahoney, and the entire Healy-Driscoll team for their leadership and commitment to this industry and our clean energy future. I want to thank Salem Mayor Dominic Pangello and the Salem City Council for their partnership as well. And thank you as well to Salem's amazing legislature, legislators, Senator Joan Lovely and Representative Manny Cruz for their support of our work, especially here in Salem. As CEO of MassCEC, I have the privilege of leading an amazing team who works each and every day to accelerate our clean energy transition while generating strong economic growth and creating good jobs in our cities and towns. As you've heard this morning, the Salem Offshore Wind Terminal represents a very important part of our clean energy future here in Massachusetts, and we are so pleased to be playing a part in the development of port infrastructure in Salem that will give our state an even greater lead in America's new offshore wind industry. Today, though, would not be possible without the folks who worked for years 
behind the scenes to make this project a reality. A special thank you to the head of Mass CEC's offshore wind team, Bruce Carlisle. Yeah. And a shout out to some of his brilliant team who's here with us today, Lisa Engler, Nils Golgan, Lauren Farnsworth, Tim Griffin, and Jeannie Hood. Thank you all for your hard work on this. And thank you to Mass CEC's general counsel, John Hitt, and his team for their efforts to lead extensive stakeholder negotiations which brought parties together around this common goal and made today possible. Meeting Massachusetts climate goals requires us to come together to make large-scale infrastructure projects like this terminal a reality. The effort, expertise, and perseverance of the climate leaders here today prove that Massachusetts can do big things. Before I conclude, I want to say thank you to the residents of Salem. Mass CEC is so honored to be part of this community, and we look forward to growing our relationships here with our new neighbors. Thank you. And now please give a warm welcome to Josh Rawl from the Maritime Administration. Good morning, everyone. My name is Josh Rawl. I am the Acting Director of Ports and Waterways Planning for the Maritime Administration. I have to say I'm enjoying this weather from being down in the hazy, hot, and humid uh, D.C. weather. So. On behalf of the Department of Transportation and the Maritime Administration, I am pleased to be in Salem and have this opportunity to address you in this groundbreaking initiative. Maritime Administrator Phillips sends her regards. She wishes she could be here for today's celebration. This is an extraordinary time at Mered and throughout the Department of Transportation as we work to provide the American people with one of the greatest investments in our infrastructure, the Bipartisan Infrastructure Legislation Law, uh, or Bill. This investment will benefit communities for generations to come. Since its enactment in November 2021, Bill has made historic investments in the transportation sector involving uh, improving public safety, climate resilience, creating jobs, and delivering a more equitable future. To date, nearly $454 billion in Bill funding has been announced to over 56,000 projects and awards across 4,500 communities in 50 states, D.C., and the territories. Today, I want to talk about the role of the Maritime Administration uh, and talk about the role of the Maritime Administration in this effort, including our work creating infrastructure at our ports to support all facets of the offshore wind facility. Marad's mission and responsibility is to foster, promote, and develop the maritime industry to meet our nation's economic and security needs today and in the future. We are committed to modernizing our nation's port infrastructure, and this has resulted in unprecedented investment in all segments of our infrastructure, including a historic investment in our ports and intermodal infrastructure, uh, and which will enable us to move goods quickly, bring down shipping costs, strengthen supply chain resiliency, and reduce the climate impacts of port operations themselves. Our grant portfolio is nearly $5 billion in federal funds only. This includes all Department of Transportation programs with a maritime port nexus and including the maritime programs themselves. Our flagship discretionary grant is the Port Infrastructure Development Program, or what we call PIDP. Marad has awarded over $2 billion in 2019 through 2023. And we are currently reviewing the 2024 applications and plan to announce the awards before the end of the year. And there are still two more years of bill funding, with nearly $9 million to be awarded. To put this in perspective, the funding provided by bill for PIDP alone is roughly about the same amount of money that has been invested in ports by all DOT grant programs before the enactment. A key component of PIDP is to build infrastructure that will enable us to address the climate crisis, 
by significantly expanding our renewable energy capabilities, including offshore wind. The goal was to reach 30 gigawatts of offshore wind energy by the year 2030. That's enough power to meet the demand of 10 million American homes for one year. It would also avoid 78 million metric tons of CO2 emissions. Achieving this ambitious goal will trigger more than 12 billion per year in capital investment projects, create good paying jobs, employ more than 44,000 workers in offshore wind by 2030, while creating additional jobs in the communities supported by the growth in the offshore wind industry. This is a whole of government approach involving many governments and agencies. Under PIDP, roughly a quarter of billion of dollars will go to nearly a dozen projects that will equip our nation's ports to boost offshore wind. We expect nearly $140 million of these funds will support floating offshore wind in particular. In closing, we applaud Crowley Wind Services and the City of Salem for partnering to develop and service marine and supply chain infrastructure for future port activities. The development of offshore wind facilities is an essential component of the effort to reach 30 gigawatts of offshore wind energy by 2030. This cutting edge terminal will significantly contribute to U.S. offshore wind development. Salem's strategic location supports offshore wind lease areas and the Gulf of Maine, making the modernized facility a vital asset. We at the Maritime Administration and throughout the Department of Transportation are using every tool we have to support this effort. We are also working closely with our partners in the government and this industry to ensure that we have the vessels and port capacity to build this vibrant new industry. Thank you for the opportunity to be a part of this event. With that, I'll turn it over to Bob Carl from Crowley. Well, when you follow nine distinguished or seven distinguished speakers like that, there's not much left to say other than thank you. As I sat here and I, I listened to the audience and I listened to the speakers that came before me, it, it reminded me of something that a good friend of mine used to say, it takes a village. The list of partners that have supported the project along, all along the way, it feels endless. We appreciate the tireless support of Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, Secretary Tepper, and the team at Mass CEC, as well as Senator Lovely, Representative Cruz, Representative Armini, and all the members of the state legislature. Thank you. <clears throat> there has been unwavering support from our representatives in Congress and their staffs, as well as invaluable guidance and support from our teams at MARAD, the Army Corps of Engineers, and NOAA. And to our customers, thank you for being here with us today. And thank you for the partnership and the confidence in this wind project, as well as the industry. Securing leases for the first six years of this operation has really helped the project move forward. And finally, to the city of Salem. The hospitality with which this team has been welcomed has been inspiring. Mayor Pangallo and his staff, <clears throat> city council members, our labor unions, and community groups have had such a significant impact on this project. And it is truly a blueprint for how we can move forward together. On behalf of Crowley Wind Services, we are honored to work with the people who are here today. And we are humbled to play a role and helping Massachusetts reach its clean energy goals. With that, let's transition to Turn the Dirt.